Mighty God, roll away any stones. Reveal to us your living and holy word to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Grace and peace to you this Easter morning. A joy-filled rally cry we make in the mystery we don't get, can't get, weren't designed to get. And yet it brings true to us, to our weary Lenten souls. Theologian Karl Barth said that what brings people to worship, and not just on Easter but any day, is the unspoken question clinging to their hearts and minds. And that question simply is, is it true? Is it true that God lives and God gives us life? The world around us has changed. Our Easter looks a little different than it has from Easter. But the good news, the resurrection news, the Easter gospel has not changed. It is the same now as it was that dark morning when Mary Magdalene found an empty tomb. We have been creating Lenten and Holy Week rituals within our own homes. We celebrate Easter online, all amidst the fear and the sorrow and the numbness and the shock that we face, that we feel in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. It feels as if the world is mocking us. What does it mean to celebrate resurrection when people in our community and around the world are dying by the thousands? What good can it do to proclaim that the tomb is empty when body bags are in short supply, mortuaries are at capacity, and mourners cannot gather to bury the dead? We can't help but ask, is it true? Does God live? Do we live? I can only speak for myself. But it feels like I'm still at the cross of Good Friday. That the stench of death still lingers in the air. I feel like our lives are in hospice care. And I can still hear the faint echo of, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I look around and I try to find Life as I knew it before March 12th. Life measured by freedom of movement. Life measured by a booming economy. Life measured by an employment rate. Life measured by church activity. Life measured by our bank accounts. Life measured by the fullness of our calendars. And so I am grieving the loss of normal. I am grieving the loss I, the life I had. We may have once said that my career is my life. We may have once said that church is my life. We may have once said that my family is my life. And today we have to admit we don't know what is next. But we know the one who does. The psalmist invites us in Psalm 118 to sing along in the face of what feels like death. To sing along with hope in the face of uncertainty. To sing along with joy in the face of despair. To sing along with in humility. Understanding how fragile life is. To sing with others. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. See, they tried to bury power, but it would not stay. They tried to bury truth, but it is not dead. They tried to bury love, but love endures. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. This clinging 
question of our hearts and our mind begs to be the yes that God is alive. Mark Twain once wrote, It is no wonder that truth is stranger than fiction. Fiction has to make sense. Friends, Easter makes no sense. It hardly made sense to the first two apostles that came to the tomb after they witnessed the aftermath of the resurrection and empty tomb, they went back home. They attempted to get back to their normal, their routines, their way of life before Jesus came along. They could accept death. We live in a world where two plus two must equal four. Our reality, though, is that we live in a world where Jesus said to Martha at the death of Lazarus, I am the resurrection in life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Truth is stranger than fiction. It makes no sense to us why God would descend into darkness to rescue humanity from a spiraling plight. Except that God proclaims, I will be their God and they will be my people. Pastor Will Willimon shares about visiting a man as he was dying. Willimon asked him what he was feeling. Was he fearful? Fear? No, the man responded. I'm not fearful because of my faith in Jesus. And then Willimon goes on and gives a pious response. Well, we all have hope that our future is in God's hands. Well, I, I'm not hopeful because of what I believe about the future. And the man went on to explain, I'm hopeful because I had been, what I have experienced in the past. I look back over my life, all the mistakes I've made, all the times I turned away from Jesus, gone my own way, strayed and got lost. And time and time and time again, he found a way to get me, showed up and got me, looked for me when I wasn't looking for him. I don't think God will let something like my dying defeat his love for me. This is a man who knew the truth of a living God. He also knew the truth about a life giving God. When we hear the Easter story, we are brought closer to the kingdom of God and death's grip on the world is broken. And it is Easter all over again and again. And this heart clinging question finds it answer. Yes, Christ has risen. Christ has risen again. God is alive. The gospel writer of John told these stories. He wrote these words so that we may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, so that we might have life here and now. An empty tomb busts open all that holds us back from living the life that we were created to live. We are an Easter people. We are a resurrected people. We are living epistles. And for Easter people, life is measured by how we love God. Life is measured by how we love our neighbors. Life is measured by how we work for justice. Life is 
measured by how we feed the hungry. Life is measured by how we comfort the mourning. And life is measured by how we embrace grace and mercy. There is one thing that, that, that this Easter has reminded me, and that is this. That Easter is messy. It is messy. I love how a friend of mine described how she wished that we could hold church this morning. Could you imagine in our sanctuary that one side would be singing the blues, they would be singing heartfelt blues and spirituals about a pandemic and death and despair. And then on the other side of the church in the other pews would be people with pots and pans and they would be clanging them in joyful noise and be singing, Christ has risen, Christ has risen indeed. All this in one space. Easter is that messy and that chaotic. An empty tomb makes no sense. Resurrection is not natural. Christ's resurrection was a protest. It was a protest of a current state, a protest against power and evil. Today's resurrection story is a protest against our current state, a protest for drawing people back to God's love. We protest fear and we reveal hope. We protest darkness and we reveal light. We protest despair and we reveal Christ dwelling. We protest despair and we reveal Christ's voice calling our name, Mary. We protest hate and we reveal God's enduring love. We protest death and we reveal life and eternal life. 